Good evening, everyone. So yesterday it was quite a fascinating day. I was with 44 young entrepreneurs, and it was really an active moment where we were training how to use a collective brain power. And tonight I will present you a little bit my history, and it's a privilege for me also to be invited with you. And I hope to share and share a little bit some message I can give based on my experience of more than 30 years in serial innovation. First, we can ask us, of course, I can tell the story about the past. This once upon the time. I want to speak about the story happened now, and how it, how it could be tomorrow, and what is our role for each other in this question about innovation. So first, we can ask us, why should we innovate? Why do we speak such a lot about innovation? For every company, what is very important is to have an access to I would say a business to money to produce money. So in the end, success is the, the oxygen of the, our society. So we need to conserve margin. And the reserve of the margin is one of the engine of innovation. But also we try to develop other things. We have to continue what we are doing today. But we must imagine that tomorrow is maybe not always the projection of yesterday. So what will be your projection? So to explain a bit uh, this genesis of the innovation, I want to tell you a little bit the story with the back of the swatch. What is behind? Uh, most of you don't remember, but in the year 1960, 85% of all watches produced worldwide was produced in Switzerland. And we lose 60% of the market in 10 years. So in 10 years, we closed of bankruptcy. So it was a total crisis in the watch industry in Switzerland. We lose 60,000 jobs. And everyone was thinking it's finished. The Swiss watch industry will disappear like other microtechnic industry we had in our country. And no one was ready to place one penny on this industry. And uh, what was surprising, I was very young, I was 86 years, uh, tw 26 <laughs> years, and uh, I was classically junior, so I was a bit frustrated. And my target was to imagine and to can use new machinery, but I was not, not understanding that my boss was asking strange questions because he was not never asking to me. And the problem here was, was how can we produce cheap watches with an excellent quality and immediately out of Switzerland. Can we do that? So everyone was pretending this is absolutely impossible. So all the development pretended that this way we can go. I was using all the injection molding machine and I, my wish was to receive a beautiful one. So I was not imagining to produce a watch in the beginning. I was simply, simply a passionate engineer and I was trying to receive a fantastic gift for Christmas, a new injection molding machine. So I asked for half a million money to the company. And I was not understanding that that was a dream was not so easy to receive. And suddenly I received a phone for the secretary of the big boss. I should be in one, of the, in one hour in the office of my big boss. I never met him before. We was in this company 8,000 worker. 4,000 lose their job inside of two years. And I came with a request of half a million dollars. And I came to, I, I jumped to my friend Jack Muller and I, I said to him, we were thinking about how can look at new kind of watches, we make a sketches. And I did these sketches in one hour. In one hour I had to present something, not to gain a project, to don't be kicked kick out of the society. So I was protecting myself. So I came to the boss uh, office and he asked me, are you crazy? Why do you use such amount of money? And in the end he asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, look, if we will have this kind of technology, we could imagine this kind of product. He was willing, but I was not knowing that. And so we started to work on it. And why it was a revolution? Not because it's a cheap uh, plastic watch, because it's a totally new way. It was not the projection of the past. It was not like we was working. And the key in this kind of revolution is you have to understand the know-how. 
you have to understand the project. So the concept was impossible, but we have to go down in the know-how to understand how we can transform it. So of course, we was looking about the watchmaker know-how, but we was looking how cars was built, how was toys produced, how instrument instrument can we realize, which way can we use. And out of that, we recognize it's not so easy. We have to change the concept. And we introduced something which was absolutely shocking at that time. We proposed that these watches will not be possible to repair. That was incredible to make out of Switzerland a, such an un-Swiss product was considering as a scandal. It was our base, our business model was after safe services. Uh, somebody who sells watches is very happy to see his client, client coming back and try to sell him something new, a jewelry or something like that. And we proposed to don't repair a watch. And that was really absolutely inaccepting. But so we had, based on that, to go back and don't know how, how to realize it. So we realized a very simple assembly, but that was not enough. We reduced the production cost for $20 to $5. Was that enough? And uh, it's a colleague of me who proposed to modify the concept again. He said that to pretend to make cheap watches is not a target. Make out of it a fashion product. To have a fashion product is a totally different view. And we started to work on that afterwards. We first realized the economy, we can produce it cheaper, but how to make it now a uh, concept like a swatch. But uh, nobody was understanding us because we didn't have had the know-how. We was producing component for watches. Like if Bosch, we proposed to produce a car. We were simply producing a part of the watches. And this know-how was, for example, design. Design was not our understanding. So we have to discover the other, the other know-how with design. And we tried to sell not successful. We was going to US because US they don't have a strong memory. You can't make a mistake and restart. And so we made a mistake. We was going to Dallas and we tried to sell watches and it was catastrophic. And we was going in the wrong way. So we try another way and it was blooming days given us the proposal saying look, if you want to sell a fashion and product, you have to sell it clothes of fashion. You cannot sell it clothes of watches. So bring the watches to the fashion. So he proposed us to make shopping shop and to sell the product in that place. In the beginning, we had no name. The first name of the squash was Vulgaris. And after Bogdais, that gave an idea about what the opinion was of our colleague about our product. We tried to sell that to other brand. No one brand was ready to use this horrible product. They say it's not a product. It's not a watch. It's maybe a gift, but not a watch. How can we pretend to sell that through our great brand? We tried with big, big, make a Leitner uh, writing instrument. He was saying, no, I'm not interested. We was trying to sell it to battery producer. Where you buy battery, you could buy watches. And the battery producer keep a uh, connection with him at home and her wife was saying they are not really beautiful. So he decided to consign. And so in the end, we, we use the name Swatch, which is a contraction of Swiss watch. But Swatch in US, the US mean a piece of, of fabric to decide about the color of the fabric. And so we was able to protect the name Swatch. And so at the end, we came with the product Swatch, the, the fashion that it. Nobody has had an idea in the beginning where will we go? What was important is to stay in move, to try to go fast. And all this, for the first sketches on the desk of my director to the first product on the market, it was three years. So we introduced the product in 83 on the market and proposed in 80. It was surprising. We were not expected a success. We was imagining where our calculation was based on 5 billion total in production and on five years of surviving. Now Swatch exists at more than 30 years, and we have sold something like 600 million watches. We have made a cash flow for $7 billion. No one 
60, that in the beginning. Money cannot be a target, it is a result. If you make a good job, maybe you will have money, but money is not a target itself. We were targeting something seems to be possible, say five million on the same watches, and that was absolutely a success, a surprise, and an ex unexpected element. But what was important, it was the full support of our boss. And our boss was Ernst Tonke. A lot of people think that was Mr. Hyatt. He was later. He made also a good job in selling organization, but it was not in the beginning of the company. The idea or the, the wish to have this was our boss, Mr. Ernst Tonke, what is not recognized today, that is natural. The picture you have from a product is always the picture, picture the company you want to give. Because a picture, the history is normally looking to the past in a positive way. We try to make like an environment to en enhance the product. You don't try to tell the truth. The truth makes only sense to understand how it's happened. So what can we learn out of this? I think this is important to understand. And then for me, the key question was, what is the creative process? How can we repeat? Because the interest is the serial innovation, not the unique innovation. My interest was to repeat success. To have one success is nice, but it was expected in the beginning. How can we repeat success? We as students, we learn a lot of this process. Normally, we know we have six months to deliver something, and the first four months we sleep or we, we, we do something else, we are not focused. And only at the end we start to run, we begin to come in panic and to do deliver something. That is probably not the right way to do. How can we avoid this stress? Who is not the best way to find a new way, a really new one? The negative sh show us that the evolution is a fantastic instrument. Cannot, can we not wait simply? Yeah, be passion. Look how the market reacts and adapt us. Yes, evolution was fantastic, but it takes millions of years. We have only one life in front of us. We want to see results. In US, it was a quite interesting theory about intelligent design. Intelligence design to me, everything is prepared. You don't have to make a specific effort. You will find a solution. The same American people introduced the design thinking with the word play between intelligent design. Say, no, we have to make a design thinking. We have to help us. We have to observe around us, and we have to propose a new way. So the design thinking is, is really an excellent base. Be inspired by the other one. Try to look what is around you and try to adapt the proposal to this new tendency. In his friend, it was a very interesting theory, the CK theory. The CK theory says simply, you have one mathematic unit, a space of concept, and you have a space of know-how. And the space of concept has the particularity to be not logic and to be not true or false. The space of know-how is logic and it's right or not right. And these two states are in conflict together. And we have to work together. It's important to find a way. And in the beginning, a concept is always an oxymoron. It's something that seems to be impossible. If it's possible, do it. The, the innovation is producing to make the impossible possible. And this is the key question. So every time somebody pretends it's absolutely impossible, it's an excellent cater, maybe it's a way to go in innovative movement. But it's a dance. You go for a concept and you look for know-how. And when you find know-how, not in your field, in other field, you go back to the concept and maybe you make an evolution of the concept. So the concept is like a tree, a tree grow up. You can choose, you have to choose. You can go left or right. But always you, be, you are going to be inspired by the know-how. So the know-how is important. Without know-how, you cannot realize it. But the concept is important. But without the other one, you cannot work. So the dance is the dance between the devil. So conceptual people have to work with know-how people. 
and know how people are collaborate with this concept when people is not one dominated the other one. That is what I learned out of the Swatch story. It was not only a technical problematic, it was not only a design problematic, it was not only a marketing problem problematic, but it was all of that together. And it was the right way to find the balance between all the different elements. And this is the art of our life. We have to find balance. Another problematic I saw is the misunderstanding systematically between innovation and renovation. A lot of you all had the experience of making something new. For example, building a house. You have to choose a place. Once you have the place, you can decide about the size of your house, about the number of level, the number of room. You don't know exactly in the beginning how we look the house. You know simply you need a house for your family. And progressively you decide about the detail and you go to realize it. In the same if you make a company, if you make a product, if you make something new in your life, what you never did before. You try, you make mistakes, you restart, you change your opinion, and suddenly, progressively, you go to the reality. And you are very lucky if you come to the market. But the market is terrible. The market is never happy. The market wants that you change something. You make it bigger, smaller, different color, different size, uh, new function, new services, something like that.